So, welcome to this very last talk of this session, uh, which will be about tensor-based framework for large-scale spatiotemporal raster data processing. So, Sukriti. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shukriti Patacharya. Uh, I have been working on that topic for some time in Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology in the Geocomputation Group, along with my colleague uh, Christian Brown and uh, Ulrich Leopold sitting over there. So, uh, basically, these are the research questions based on that uh, we did our research. So, actually, we are trying to tackle the curse of dimensionality issues uh, in uh, earth observation data, especially. So, curse of dimensionality means when you have a huge amount of data with different dimensions. So, it creates the scalability uh, problem in, in the computation when you are doing computation. And then we are also trying to find out a single data structure where you can keep uh, spatial and temporal information together. And also uh, the main concern was the time and the scalability. So to address these questions, we proposed a sophisticated way of handling large scale spatiotemporal um, data in the uh, raster based GIS. And uh, basically we adopt uh, the concept of uh, a tensor, so we have tensor algebra. We implement it uh, using uh, a TensorFlow, which is a open source library uh, from Google. Uh, I will come to uh, TensorFlow later and hence a detailed description of tensor later in the next slide. And then uh, we, we uh, did some kind of case studies on our proposed uh, framework. So we kind of uh, quantify the spatiotemporal dynamics of solar radiation calculation and 2.5D shadow calculation for large cities with a high uh, space-time resolution. Okay, so uh, what is a tensor? Tensor is basically a mathematical object uh, which is kind of a generalization of uh, uh, like uh, matrices with, uh, to higher dimensions. So a tensor can be recognized by three parameters. The first one is the order, like the unit of dimensionality, then the shape of the tensor, and the, the third one is the type of value it uh, contains, basically. So in the picture you can see, in the figure one, uh, you have scalar, vector, matrix, and then tensor. So uh, the dimension is 3D here, and the shape is, so basically it's a four, three cos four uh, matrices club together. And these are the different component of a tensor that you can uh, use during your computation. And now, uh, what is TensorFlow? As I told you before, TensorFlow was kind of uh, invented in Google. Basically, TensorFlow was designed for uh, big data handling in deep learning. But uh, it is general enough that you can use it um, in different scientific calculations. So. Uh, in the right hand side, in the picture figure three, you have the basic uh, TensorFlow architecture. So the, you can use different front end uh, to access that TensorFlow distribu uh, distributed uh, execution engine. So we use Python front end, and then you can deploy your code uh, irrespective of CPU and GPU is very transparent. So here we use only CPU. And uh, this is the uh, block diagram of a TensorFlow um, program, basically. So uh, you first, you can build the computational graph, then you can allocate memory uh, dynamically, and then you can create a session where inside the session you can execute the graph. And uh, you can execute that particular graph in um, uh, CPUs and GPUs irrespectively without changing the code. It's very transparent, as I said. And then after that, you can close the session. Okay, so this is the basic uh, kind of uh, uh, philosophy behind that, that uh, entire thing. So in, you have some uh, temporal information in the x-axis, and these are basically the observations. So you can consider it like, like, a, like a azimuth angle, suppose. So you have uh, the azimuth angle changes according to the sun position. Uh, so you can keep it like in T1, T2, T3, you have different azimuth for the same location. So what you can do, you can just create a tensor, it's a 3D tensor. So you have XYZ thing, in the X axis you have the temporal information and 
you can club all these matrices together to build a single data structure. Uh, so using that, uh, that, that, that philosophy, we uh, basically model uh, solar irradiation. So in the figure seven, you can see uh, solar irradiation uh, is a total solar irradiation is a summation of uh, direct, diffuse, and ground reflected irradiations. So this is the basic uh, kind of architecture the, uh, of our tool. So you are collecting data, the DSM data, uh, like uh, and atmospheric data. You are building the tensor there, and this is dotted box is the TensorFlow main program, and you are calculating the solar angles, and uh, you can see that you are doing the diffuse radiation, beam radiation, and ground reflect radiation, summation, total radiation. So what we have done, uh, we need to rewrite all these equations because you know these are not new. Uh, all these equations, mathematical equations, are already present in the astronomy part. So what you have to do, you need to rewrite it according to the tensor data structure because at the end of the day, you are going to execute all these uh, kind of equations, mathematical equations in uh, TensorFlow. Uh, you can see here there is a small part called shadow calculation, which is the most uh, heaviest and expensive operation. So if you look at a pixel-based operation, then a particular pixel, is, okay, so consider a raster, and uh, if a particular location is one, that means it is in shadow. So you can imagine if for a big city, for each and every point to calculate whether it is in shadow or not, is a, it's a heavy and exhaustive operation. But uh, you know, we rewrite that shadow, shadow calculation. We, even we published few papers on it separately. So this is the basic uh, principle of um, uh, shadow, shadow geometry from DSM thing. Uh, so basically, we are calculating the horizon angle and altitude angle. And I'm not going into the detail. But if you look at here, this is the uh, module for shadow calculation. So here, we use TensorFlow and SpySpark to accelerate the overall operation. So you can see in the SpySpark module, there is an algorithm called Bresenham lines drawing algorithm. Uh, so it's, it's a very, very uh, well-known algorithm from computer graphics. Uh, so we use it. And uh, the overall approach is significantly faster than the already existing one. Significantly means more than 70% faster. So, uh, but it's a 2D, huh? 2D, 2D uh, shadow. So this is uh, the visualization of the computational uh, uh, data flow graph. This is called tensor board. Uh, it comes with TensorFlow, uh, so you can see uh, your actual implementation as like, you know, like a, a graph. So here uh, you can see the nodes are basically tensors, and the arrows are the flow. So TensorFlow has a property like it, 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 it has inherent uh, distribution and uh, parallelism property. So we use it, um, and uh, we are using only CPU, as I said. We can use GPU, then our code code could be, uh, I mean, you know, execute, could be executed even faster. But we use only CPU for the benchmarking purpose. So this is the uh, tensor board representation of uh, the shadow calculation only. The overall calculation, I can generate the graph, but it will be really big. So I just put that shadow part here. So we apply uh, that thing, uh, like our approach uh, to uh, Azorzete is the second largest uh, town in Luxembourg. So you can see here, uh, so you have DSM uh, range from 279 meter to 426 meter, and uh, uh, the grid size is 1,874 across 1,828. So this is the uh, result. Um, so it's, it's, it's in 22nd, uh, like uh, December at morning 8.30. So this, this is the shadow shadow thing for the whole ash, and this is the part of ash, like maybe from here, I believe. So you have beam uh, diffuse and ground reflected radiation. So we basically uh, calcu uh, compare our result with grass, uh, r.sun. So r.sun has a module that performs the same thing, like uh, what we have done. So our purpose was to replicate that thing, but in a more scalable and faster way. So you can see here the x-axis is the temporal resolution we, uh, in minutes. And uh, that graph is the percentage of improvement with respect to grass. And that is uh, my configuration of my computer. We are not using any GPUs. I have 12 core. 
And uh, so somehow I am on an average, I am getting 60% uh, benefit. And uh, this is the conclusion. Uh, basically what we are trying to do, this is just the beginning. What we are trying to do, we are trying to replicate that map algebra, algebraic function uh, using TensorFlow to make different APIs so that we can, you know, uh, so we, we will name it uh, not a cube rather than an n-dimensional map algebra. And uh, uh, because we already have all these facilities in board, we don't need to work for uh, distribution, we don't need to work for parallel, parallel computation, it's already there. And even we can use uh, uh, GPUs to accelerate it more. And uh, that's it. And this is the part of Secure Project and funded by Innovus Foundation Luxembourg. Yeah. Half past eight in the morning. Uh, yeah. 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 So th th that was the, the, the performance was based on, on that. No, on no, no. The, yeah. the performance was okay. So I put only one uh, picture here, but we did for several time and several day in a year, and and again. So that is the temporal resolution, you know. So this is one slab of the temporal resolution. So we did from the sunrise to sunset, and uh, the performance is based on the overall calculation. From sunrise to sunset. And what's the size of the data set, uh, the, the, the total size of the data yeah, set? Yeah, so this is the uh, uh, data set, size of the data set. So you have this gr the grid size is like this. And uh, uh, you can change the temporal resolution in the code, uh, like one minute, 10 seconds, anything. So you can increase the temporal resolution by yourself. And this is the actual spatial resolution. Yeah, I mean by, by the temporal resolution, yeah. Huh? I meant the temporal resolution. Okay, what so temporal the, resolution could be anything. Like, you can give it to yeah. there. So here, uh, is, that's why if you look at the uh, final, uh, so here, you have in minutes, so you have 1.5 minute, 2.5 minute, 5 minutes. So these are the sunrise to sunset and equal interval temporal resolution. Thank you. Yep. Hi, I was just wondering how much faster it is to run on GPUs. Yep, basically we, we didn't run it on GPU. The reason is we were trying to, uh, you know, benchmark it with R.Sun. So it, it would be unfair if, I, if you use GPU and compare it with R.Sun. But I believe uh, it will be faster for sure. <laughs> even, even, you know, like uh, uh, that shadow calculation thing, mainly we are really proud of because uh, I can tell you, like, just run, uh, you, you have, in grass, you have r.horizon, maybe, or something, I, if I remember. Uh, the same thing, just give the same input to r.horizon, and it will take, I am sure, more than a few hours to calculate the shadow. And uh, in our case, it took two minutes, so you can imagine. So how fast it is. But uh, for that, I will give the credit to SpySpark as well. So we use SpySpark, but not the GPU. But it will be really interesting to see what is going to happen if we use GPUs here. Any questions? Please. Is this working? Yeah. yeah. Um, how much would it make a difference maybe if you just cut it up into tiles? sufficiently overlapping to take into account, let's say, the size of the shadows, and then parallelize it that way in grass, our sun. Yeah. Um, at least the difference you saw here, I had the feeling you would probably get the same really? speed up then. But, okay, so... If I you mean, say okay, there's so about an 80% difference now... But uh, you, you are saying that you will use that R dot horizon in parallel environment, right? Like, you will... Yeah, of course. But what I'm doing, I'm not doing any parallel execution... I'm just running r.horizon in the from command prompt without any kind of parallel processing. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you do, uh, you have GPUs, you will get more faster. So I'm not comparing with that level. But yeah, you're right, you will get the same thing. If you, uh, parallel execution is possible in grass. So if you do parallel execution, then yeah. But I'm not doing any parallel execution here. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So oh, again, so uh, Spark is uh, parallel, like in 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 data level. So you, we we are not incorporating any kind of uh, HPCs. Okay. So even Python multi programming, you can tell is parallel. You know, in that sense. But uh, we are not using any HPCs and all. We just use Spark um, to accelerate uh, that Bresenham algorithm because Bresenham algorithm work as a pair pairwise. Like it takes a pair of coordinate and calculate all the possible points that join those two coordinates. So we use uh, Spark to run all those, you know, uh, uh, like a pair of coordinates parallelly, but not using any added hardware. Any other questions? No? Okay, well then, thank you very much. Thank you so much.